Dreams don't have to be dreams. They can become reality. With every swing. Every shot. And every step. Leader. Competitor. Game changer. Nuestro tiempo es ahora. We carry more than just a bag on our shoulders. We carry the weight of each other. We've watched and admired the greats. Now it's our turn to write the story. It's time to level up. PGA Tour Originals Level Up is presented by Bridgestone. Tiger Woods has been monumental for the game of golf. He brought a different type of swagger. He brought a fiery passion. Again at Bay Hill. Above all else, he's a colored man, and I really look up to him for that. Golf traditionally has been a sport of exclusivity, and it certainly has changed. The demographics have changed. The sexes have changed. It's more reflective of what our country is. And is it by far and away better? Yes, but it also has that much more to grow as well. HBCU golf has a ton of talent on the men's and women's side. We want our tours to look as much like America as it can be. When everybody has a seat at the table, it's a better table. Just got out of class, heading to Ted Rhodes now to practice. A lot of people don't know exactly who Ted Rhodes is, but he's honestly one of the pioneers of golf for minorities and African-Americans. He was a big influence to a lot of people. Tiger Woods mentioned Ted Rhodes as a pioneer after his first Masters win, going to an HBCU, and then being able to play at such a historic site like Ted Rhodes Golf Course is just, it's awesome. He's definitely been a character that I've looked up to as of recent, just because of all the hardships that I know he had to endure. I just try to look back at his situation and feed off of that and use that to motivate myself sometimes. I've been playing pretty much my whole life. I had a set of clubs as soon as I was born, but I really started taking it serious when I was about 10 years old. I actually made the varsity golf team as a fifth grader, so that was a huge accomplishment. What made me fall in love with the game, I think, is the fulfillment you get from hitting a good shot. The goalposts are always moving, and so there's always something in front of a golfer that motivates them to be better. Jared's very athletic. He's a great student. He, like a lot of other players that we get in, has aspirations for taking their game to the next level. Looking back to where I started, to where I am now, I can remember coming out with my dad as a kid and kind of dreaming of being in this position, you know, playing college golf, especially Division I, the highest level. Just to see how it played out and the journey that it took to get here from when I was a kid, it's awesome. The game of golf, one, you have to play the ball where it lies. And how that relates to life is you don't always get to make the choices of how your life turns out. But what you do have is the ability to change the way you interpret these things. So if you look at a bad line, a bunker, as just an opportunity to prove yourself that you can accomplish something, you're gonna be fine. It's important going to an HBCU and playing golf for me, specifically because I like to see others like myself out and enjoying the game as well. It's a sport for everyone. I always like to say the golf ball doesn't know who's hitting it. Hi, how are you 
Jared. Hello, good. I'm Tiffany White, Ted Rhodes' granddaughter. Oh, wow, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you wow. as well. Truly a pleasure to, to meet you today. Yeah. Did that surprise you? Absolutely, this is, this is crazy. And Thank you, you so uh -huh. much. I love this picture of my grandfather. He started playing golf as a caddy which was great because I think that taught him some great fundamentals mm. about the game of golf. Wow, that's amazing. So he basically started from the ground up. He started from the green and kind of worked his way out and that's how he kind of got the fundamentals of it. I love this article because it talks about my grandfather is not forgotten. We are keeping his legacy alive by making it easier for African Americans to play the game, especially students at the HBCUs. Thank you so much for being here today and for studying my grandfather. Golf is a really, really difficult game. You just gotta continue on and keep trying to find fairways. Let's look at these. Look at that, what year is that? 2002. Oh, man, this is nice. Oh, man, let's see. Let's look in there. Seeing these, it just brings back memories, you know? I am so glad we found these. We're going to place these on the wall. This is nice trophy. Let's put it on here. Yeah. Yeah. This is where the future of golf came from for us. This is gonna help them win, show them what they can do. This is motivation to help them know that it did happen, it can happen, and it will happen again. The golf program has been away for more than a decade. And now we're back. We've had to find a course to play. We've had to find equipment and apparel. We've had to find players. To be able to go to the golf course and see those recruits come in and see the first tee shot hit down the fairway, it's exciting to see. And so we're back and we're expecting the win. It's about repetition. Repetition, you want to get those sand wedges like when then 15 feet. It's not just about golf, but it's about life. We're talking about opportunities for young people. Oh yeah, now that's the best one, I think. So it's our jobs to make sure that these students have that access. Don't swing so hard trying to reach it because of the wind and you hit it online, you know. Our motto for our golf program is success is no accident. When we bring the players in, it starts with communication, talking with them finding out where they are, understanding what they're looking for. Now we there. That's a high five. Once we find that out, we <laughs> set a plan. They have a training three times a week. We work out and play five times a week. Want to get the hips loosened up. These courses we're going to be playing, we don't want them to run out of gas once they get on the back nine. Good, big chest. Nice job. Golf is a very hard game. It teaches you discipline. When you're playing golf, you have a teammate, but you're on your own. So you have to go out there and perform. 65% of it is mental. So we try to keep these guys and ladies positive. Great job today. Got our mobility, got our strength work in. Good work, all right? Let's keep stacking days to keep getting better. So this is the only tattoo my dad was okay with. It says, trust the process. <laughs> that's something that my dad and I have always said. I've trusted the process, and that's why I am where I am now. Nakia Smith, first person in her family to graduate from college and was interested in continuing her golf path, but also attending graduate school. I'm super excited to be a part of the program that's coming back. It hasn't been around for a while, so there's a lot of eyes on us. I started playing when I was 12 years old. 
My dad just one day took me out there and I just enjoyed it ever since. So that's been something that him and I can bond over and still do. It brings me a sense of relaxation, peace, calm. Back home, there isn't a lot of representation as far as women in playing golf and black women playing golf. I definitely have to prove myself. A lot of people have different opinions and I have to learn how to get that all out of my head and just focus on what I know how to do best. So that's really also pushed me to keep going. I do want to eventually coach and be that type of person like my coaches are for me. I feel good about you guys. I'm happy for what I have. So I appreciate all of you. We got to keep looking forward. The doors are going to close when we're going to continually to knock them down until we get where we want to go. If you look on the PGA Tour now, there's not a lot of my people out there that look like me. If we help, this could possibly happen. Without a dream, you have nothing. These kids are looking forward to the next level. And I would love to try to help them get there. Success is no accident. <laughs> FAMU is way more than just school. It's a big family. The Florida A&M men's golf program has been around for decades. It's been very successful. We won at least a tournament every year for the last six or seven years. And I think that's important for the team to understand that they can win, they can be done. These kids can really play and the program has really grown from it. <laughs> we have young men from all over the country that want to come play golf at FAMU and that's a great thing. First up, Patrick Jean-Pierre from Florida a &M University. My number one goal in my life is to be a successful professional golfer. That's what drives me. Growing up, I was getting in trouble a good bit in school, and my godmom at the time had introduced me to First Tee of Augusta. And the whole point of that was not only to play golf, but to learn the core values that First Tee has to offer. And in the process, I ended up loving golf. After high school, unfortunately, I did not play my first 18 to 24 months. Most of that is because of I didn't do my job in academics in high school. He was at Clayton State and was not playing golf, was just a student. And I get a call from an alumni that says, hey man, why don't you look at this kid? I said, absolutely, let's look into him. I reached out to Coach Rice and he let me walk on the next semester. And then when I walked on, I mean, I pretty much earned my spot to where I'm at now. It was the Masters when Tiger won in 2019. After the injuries and the comebacks he made, that is what really what drove me. You know, that was during the time when I wasn't playing golf. Better than most. He beat all the naysayers. He went out there and did it. <laughs> to not be the student he was in high school, Pat's had a 4.0 for the last two or three years now. Great leader, he's been the captain of our team for three years. He's a guy that goes out there, you know you can depend on Pat. He's always going to find a way to get it done. Golf has changed my life. I wasn't really heading down the best road when it comes to discipline, and it made me take my schoolwork seriously. Gonna be a huge loss to us next year, not having him around, because he's been a big part. Sorry. Wow. You get special ones. Nah, uh, he was a kid that wasn't gonna play college golf. He thought that was done, but his determination to want to play college golf is like none I've ever. And then to take that opportunity and be where he's at, he did all that. He's just that guy. We're going to miss him for sure. I know I am. So it's 280 to the left corner of that bunker. Oh, I see too much. All right, win, lose, or draw, go out there and have fun. Because if you're not having fun, you're not playing golf the right way. Oh, no. <laughs> A lot of people are not blessed to have this situation that a lot of us are blessed to have. So take advantage of what you have and know that you gave it your all when it's all said and done. Tiger. Pleasure. Good seeing you. Good to see you. Tiger. Lauren. Bree, nice to meet you. Bree? Pleasure to meet you, Bree. Get this, right? And get this rounded. 
and just hit it from right there. And this is nothing but little, little punch shots from there. One of the things that I enforce all juniors, all kids, all pros, is that when I'm getting ready for tournaments, I make sure that each and every day I have 1,000 contacts with a club, okay? That doesn't mean hitting 1,000 balls on a range. That means possibly maybe hitting 100 balls on a range, 300 chip shots, 600 putts. That develops feel and sensation. And that never goes away. Got you more neutral. If you want to be have a cut from there, club B has to be more left at the top. There you go. <laughs> it's neat to see the younger crowd of, of players that are taller, bigger, more athletic, faster, stronger, but also the seat on the women's side as well. They're better, stronger, faster, shoot lower scores, hit the ball further than, than ever. There you go. Look at you turn the corner, hit that little peeler, baby. If you're not getting better, you're getting worse. If you're standing still, someone's passing you. It takes reps and you sit there and you get uncomfortable. It hurts. What does that teach you? How to focus, how to block out all the distractions. Just for that one more rep, I'm tired. It hurts. I'm gonna smoke this driver, okay? I'm, I know I can do it. I know I can do it. You don't have to be a professional golfer to be a part of golf. You can have a wonderful living and be part of, a, I think, a sport that teaches you so many different life lessons. I didn't think I was going to make it on tour. So it's one of the reasons why I chose Stanford over the, over the other schools. If I didn't make it in golf, academically, I'd have a secure place and a workforce post-golf. Number two is that it wasn't until my sophomore year that I thought I was halfway decent enough to possibly entertain turning pro. We got some speed. Ooh wee Someone got some speed. He didn't think he was good enough to play golf, and that just kind of just changed my perspective on everything, because we all have our doubts, even the greatest of all time. That was a moment we're all cherished for life. Bridgestone is committed to growing the game of golf because we believe everybody should have the same opportunity to pursue their dreams. Our primary goal with our partnership with the PGA Tour and the reason it's so important is we both have shared values around making sure we're creating space for equitable access for all golfers today and for generations to come. Every space, including the game of golf, our players and our fans, should represent the communities where we move, live, work, and play. The Bridgestone Collegiate Development Program looks at providing holistic opportunities for players and coaches. We're focused on mentorship opportunities to help create a sense of community, providing athletes with some experiences on the most prestigious courses and an opportunity to play in some exceptional tournaments. What really matters is that this is a stepping stone for black golfers and generations to come. We believe golf teaches skills such as leadership, self-confidence, and teamwork, skills that are invaluable to everyday life. Not only to provide them the financial support that they need to play the sport that they love, but also provide them resources that they're able to take off the course. Our hope is in the long run, both the players in the sport as well as the fans will be as diverse as the communities we serve. The expectation is that HBCU golf as a whole gets better as we give them more developmental opportunities, more awareness of their programs and how great their programs are. Player development really is, ultimately it's our investment in underrepresented communities in golf. Understanding there are hurdles, barriers to not only entry, but really when it comes to advancement leading up to the professional ranks. We want the next generation of golf, whether it's inside the ropes or outside the ropes. Jonathan, we'll see y'all first. We want to support all of these kids, no matter what they want to do. The Bridgestone HBC Invitational, where 10 men's teams, five women's teams are playing for developmental opportunities. 
playing at a course like TPC Sugarloaf, where PGA Tour champions play, where PGA Tour did play, it's helpful to be in the same place as those that were in front of you that were successful, and you can kind of have that as a measuring stick. That's what we're trying to do, I think, throughout our program. We're trying to provide a path, but also provide reassurance, provide inspiration, provide motivation for you to know that you can make it at the next level. The whole goal of the program itself is really to create a holistic approach with these athletes, not just from a financial standpoint, but how are we supporting them throughout their whole journey. We have two brand new tournaments that we'll be hosting, allowing HBCU schools to compete against the best of the best. This was my first time being at a tournament like this, and I definitely want to be at more. I was really looking forward to making new connections, meeting new people, being able to play with different schools, with people with different backgrounds. I had a great, great time, so I'm looking forward to next year's tournament as well. Seeing the British Own HBC Invitational helps me understand that we are on the right path. We want to inspire the next generation of golf to keep on going to understand that there is so many success stories, so many opportunities for you. What really matters to me about the game of golf is the opportunities to change people's lives. I'm gonna try to go pro, but you know, I know that God has a bigger plan for me. We want you to be a professional golfer, just like you probably do. But if you don't, we still have a place for you when it comes to the world of golf and stay involved with the game, be successful with the game, and inspire the next generation that comes up, because we're gonna be doing this for a long time.